I actually think I'm very uh, attractive bald. <laughs> I have a very symmetrical head. <laughs> but you know, it, it was also, I, and, and then of course it's a road that I've been down before with, with water, of course I, I, I shaped my, my hair in, in that particular film as well. So um, of course it was very different when I was dealing with my treatment for cancer because it was, it was a matter of choice, you know, the control was taken away from me. So I actually decided ahead of time that um, I wanted to shave my head before my hair fell out. And, um, and it was such an interesting experience to go through, you know, it was really such an emotional journey. And at the same time, it was very matter of fact and very mundane. And I think that going through any sort of, um, uh, you know, uh, difficult disease treats you that, you know, it teaches you that there becomes a new normal. So, you know, whether you're bald, whether you're, whether, you know, I was bloated on steroids and then I lost the weight and, you know, there's, there's been something very, very profound that you learn out of that, that, you know, that there's, there's something that has to remain with you throughout that. There has to be sort of um, an anchor, you know, and, 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 you know, it's very much dealing with Maya, isn't it, you know, and the fact that everything else is a bit of an illusion. You know, we change and we're going to go through so many changes and I, I went through these changes in a very, um, sort of uh, shortened period of time. Um, but you know, ultimately we all grow old, our, our bodies change and, 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 uh, and we pass on. Um, so you know, I don't find these things um, frightening anymore. There's a fear factor, but the fear factor was taken out of it by being very open and speaking about it openly. But you know, one thing strikes me, in the end you've been a product of the vanity industry, you've been a model, you've uh, been um, an actress, you've, you've been regarded as one of the most beautiful women in the world and there you are sort of losing so many of your physical sort of attributes to cancer. So for, for you personally, for where you were under the arc lights, has this battle been that much more complicated because of who you are? Um, I think that's a very valid point and that was one of the main motivations behind uh, the Yellow Diaries actually um, was uh, to process this strange position that I found myself in because of course I, uh, I chose to go public during the Toronto Film Festival uh, because I knew that you know it was either uh, it was either going to the red car carpet looking as I am make an excuse, lie, or just avoid it. Um, and, and, and that was really the motivating factor, was to sort of understand this um, something, what I describe as the pathology of perfection that we suffer from in our society, which is uh, not just sort of my profession, but also this idea that, um, that if you're in this particular profession that I'm in, that nothing uh, negative is going to befall you, you know, that no matter what, you're going to come out with your lip gloss intact. <laughs> and, you know, and, and having worked in the profession for as long as I have, you understand that there is, uh, you, know, there's, there, you know, there's a lot of uh, image building and illusion building. And I'm not against that at all. You know, I'm not against fantasy. And, you know, and I really respect acting and filmmaking and a lot of it is about creating, uh, creating something out of nothing. But at the same time, there's a human element. And for me, what's always been important, um, even in terms of my profession, and you know, it's sort of reflected in the choices I've made as an actor, is the humanity that's inherent in whatever we do. So uh, it doesn't matter who you are. And it, you know, it's been very encouraging. There's, a, there's another actor, um, I think he's a lead actor in a um, very popular American series called Dexter, and he's also uh, battling cancer right now. And he came out, uh, I think it was during the Golden Globes. So, you know, the more and more that we are open, we become comfortable with talking about uh, whatever it is we're going through and, and dropping the pretense. I think the healthier that we become overall as a society, and then hopefully these illusions that we have about what is perfection and what is beauty will also uh, simultaneously also drop away because it's such a subjective thing. What is beauty? You know, uh, I'm very fortunate that I'm in a, a very sort of loving relationship and that, you know, my partner, my boyfriend, um, you know, he never sort of flinched once throughout all the different changes that I went through, and physically, emotionally, uh, spiritually, psychologically. In fact, he, he joked about it. He said, you know, it's great. It's like having six girlfriends in one. I never know who I'm going to get, you know, from day to day. 
so you know you kind of have to like I I I do want to make light of such a dark thing, but at the same time you have to find the humanity in it. And for me, the humanity largely came about through humor and just being really really honest. But I think it's a very interesting question, and, and it's something that I want to continue questioning. Um, and frankly, you know, I, I, I want to be able to expand my repertoire. I'd like to be able to write about this a lot more. I'd like to be able to write an entire book, uh, actually, about my experiences one day soon. I'm still struck by how funny you managed to be on the blog, how self-deprecating, how how sardonic almost. How did sort of where did the strength come from to be funny, to actually crack a joke about such a dark? part of your life? <laughs> I'm not sure. I never thought I was that funny, actually. <laughs> um, you know, maybe it's a coping mechanism. Um, but I really did see the irony in everything I was going through. Um, and I, you know, I like to think that I would be able to see the irony in every single experience that I go through in life, you know? What, I mean, sitting here talking to you, you're in Delhi, I'm in Bangalore, we're having this very intense discussion. Um, you know, I think it's actually fun and, and, and and you know, the, I, I, I like to find a lightness in life um, because I'm actually quite a serious mother. <laughs> so I have to remind myself to lighten up. And I think that, that actually I'm much better at writing, um, expressing myself through the written word than, than even through speaking. Um, so I kind of use that, you know. That's, that's I think where my forte is and that's something I'd like to explore more and more. Well, I guess as another author, Milan Kundera called it, it's the unbearable likeness of being. But all power to you and much, much admiration, Lisa. Thank you so much for talking to us. Thanks, Barca.